Hello, my name is Dr. Anil Sood. I'm the chairman of the awards committee for the Foundation for Women's Cancer. And this is Dr. Carol Brown, who is the chair of the 2014 program for the Society of Gynecologic Oncology. Today, we would like to share some of the highlights that will be presented uh, for research at this uh, year's annual meeting. Among the first abstracts is a, uh, a, a research study by Dr. Jeff Lin from McGee Women's Hospital at the University of uh, Pittsburgh. In this study, they looked at the impact of uh, care that's given at high volume gynecologic cancer centers. And they specifically looked at the National Cancer Database and evaluated uh, over uh, 863,000 uh, records at uh, over 1,600 centers uh, that were evaluated. Out of these, they looked at those centers that were the busiest in terms of the uh, volume of patients who received care there and uh, found that while the uh, busiest centers were a bit further away for patients to get care, there was a substantial impact on patient survival in terms of uh, uh, patients who got care at the busiest hospitals uh, compared to those uh, who received care at the uh, centers which are not as busy. This um, uh, study continues to build on emerging data that for gynecologic cancer patients, it's really quite important to receive care at centers that have a lot of experience in providing uh, so, uh, medical care for women with um, uh, such cancers. Uh, for the next study, I will uh, turn over to Dr. Brown. Thanks so much, Dr. Sood. Another very important uh, abstract that was presented at this year's SGO meeting concerns uterine cancer. Uterine cancer is one of the most common cancers that affects women, and we already have a lot of information that being overweight or being obese is a risk factor for this disease. Well, Dr. Uh, Christy Ward and her associates from the Moore's Cancer Center at the University of California, San Diego, did a very interesting analysis of over 7 million hospital admissions and looked at women who had a diagnosis of uterine cancer as well as those who had had a history of having bariatric surgery or surgery to help them lose weight and compared their risk for developing this disease. Interestingly, what they found, not surprisingly, is that women who were obese had a higher rate of uterine malignancy than women who, who were not obese. But within the group of women who had had bariatric surgery, they found that those who in the bariatric surgery had actually worked, meaning they were no longer obese, had a significantly lower rate of uterine cancer than those women in whom the bariatric surgery had not worked and hadn't lost weight. And then when they compared women who hadn't had bariatric surgery to those who had, they found that having bariatric surgery seemed to confer almost a 70% lower risk of getting uterine cancer than if you hadn't. I think it's important uh, to note that the real power of the study is that obesity is a risk factor and it's one that's modifiable, meaning there are things that women can do in their own lives to cut the risk of developing this important disease. The next study is uh, uh, a study by Dr. Rob Coleman, and he uh, presented this on behalf of the Gynecologic Oncology Group. This is a clinical trial of uh, using a PARP inhibitor in women who carry a BRCA1 or 2 mutation. This is a very important study because there's been growing interest in using this class of drugs, uh, which are now known to be active, especially for women uh, who have a BRCA1 or 2 mutation. In this particular study, uh, 52 women were enrolled in the study. 50 out of these were evaluable for uh, response rates and uh, other information as well. Out of these, uh, majority of the patients actually had cancer that was resistant to platinum-based chemotherapy. So again, this was a very important study to evaluate. Moreover, uh, uh, these patients had already had other chemotherapy drugs uh, with which they were treated previously. So in this cohort of uh, patients, 26% of women had a response to the uh, PARP inhibitor. And even among women who had uh, cancers that were not responding to platinum-based therapy, the, about 20% of those women had a response. Among those women who had platinum-sensitive cancer, uh, over 35% of women had a response to PARP inhibitors. 
Again, this is a, a, an important step in understanding the role of these um, uh, drugs in how to treat women with ovarian cancer, and it continues to build on emerging data. Uh, so these, uh, all of these three studies uh, are really uh, important studies that have um, uh, importance or clinical relevance for uh, women with gynecologic cancers. Uh, thank you very much for joining us today.